at one time from an area just about exactly like this. Late in the evening, this will be August 18th of 1969, we, uh, three of us, Bob Brown, John Dienstad and myself, pulled all of the remaining pupfish on the surface of the planet Earth. And not there any below the surface, but there's where they were here. <laughs> and it had them in two buckets. The pickup truck was about not too far from where our van is over to the right. And <clears throat> this was a scary thing because it was getting dark. And this whole thing started earlier that day when uh, Bob Brown, who was a student at UCLA working for me that summer, came into the office. And he, this is where he's doing his graduate research. And he said, Phil, we better get out there to fish slough. That pond is drying up. And for whatever reason, we're not exactly sure, well, probably a combination of factors. This is in August, person. We'd had a, the, the earlier winter, 68, 69, was extremely uh, fierce winter with a high degree of precipitation all over the place, resulting in an unusually high growth of the emergent vegetation here, which of course, creates a drain on water through evapotranspiration. And apparently according to the flow gauges too, the, the, the spring flows coming into here were likewise depressed. Well together those things essentially isolated the only population anywhere of the Owens pupfish. A full species, one of the earlier, one of the first species listed under the Endangered Species Act, way back into the 60s, one of the predecessor acts. And so this was a, an interesting situation. This, uh, this was about, I'd say, uh, maybe seven or eight o'clock in the evening. That you got the call? Well, no, no, this was earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when Bob said, you know, we better get out there, we're gonna lose this species. This, this, this was right at the end of the work day, say about five o'clock. Then we just essentially loaded everything we could, the three of us, Bob and John and I, and came tearing out here with uh, nets and whatever. And also had battery powered aerators, like aquarium aerators, only to run off of batteries. And we then got all of the fish we could. And there we used, not buckets, but we had live, what we call live cages. They're just kind of little cubicles of a uh, hardware cloth to uh, small enough that it'll hold the fish. So we put the fish into these live cages and you see here, there's a, not too clear here, but there's a major flow coming out of that over, say, in the other side where you see the tulies and the water kind of behind them there. This was uh, where we placed the, the live cages, get them out of the main flow, but which is a mistake because the, the water's warm here, relatively, and warm water does not hold oxygen very well. Running water does, and the colder it gets, the more oxygen it holds. So uh, the, it was later in the day, and I said to uh, John and uh, Bob, I said, you know, you, I'll stick around here for a while. You guys take the other truck, go in, have something to eat, and come back. And I, I said, I'll follow you in. Well, just by some lucky circumstance, I thought, you know, we put a lot of effort into this. Better check and make sure the fish are okay. So I went over and uh, checked the, the cages where we had these fish in and they were starting to die in this last group of the entire remaining species. And so we, they, I was all by myself then. So I got my buckets from the truck, came back and got the live fish and they were, they were, they were stressed. You can tell when a fish is not in good shape, it turns over on its back. And so we then, <clears throat> I then, and the truck was a lot farther than that. It was probably about a quarter mile anyway. It was maybe 100 yards. And the bucket's in the dark and no lights or anything, but the battery-powered aerator is going. I hauled them across to the, to the pickup truck. And then, we'll see this later today, went around and planted them on the other side in the VLM spring area that we'll again see. So this... Uh, and how, what was it like to... Well, handle? this was a this was a traumatic thing, really, because I was keenly aware of the fact that these fish were nearly gone. I knew this was the only place, at least I'm quite sure this was true, the only place that they existed anywhere. 
and I had the only fish in these buckets. Mm -hmm. And if something had gone wrong, as I mentioned in the article I wrote for Natural History magazine, if I tripped and these fish, the species would be extinct now, it's just that, that ragged edge of extinction. Yeah.